this is Lake Elkwood High School and we are doing a project for Young Scott to explore climate change and how it affects rural communities like ours. We live in Argyll, which is situated on the west coast of Scotland, a county with a mixture of land, sea, forest and farmland. With its 2,200 kilometres of coastline, nowhere is more than 10 kilometres from the sea. Now you know a bit about where we live, you can find out more about us. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm 15. Hi, I'm Carla and I'm 14. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm 14. Hi, I'm Madeline and I'm 14. Hi, I'm Georgia and I'm 14. Melting ice caps. Rising sea level. Rising temperatures. Diseases. What about us in our gale and beauty? We're just about to go see John from Old Fishel and, and it's that, that way! Hey, this is John from Old Fishel and we're going to ask him a couple of questions. John, what do you do in your job? We basically farm the sea and send the produce to France and Spain. We try to sell as much as we can in this country, but mainly France and Spain. So we're really harvesting the ocean. So the fishermen go out with these creels, sometimes up to 20, 30 miles off the land, and drop maybe four or five hundred of these creels um, each day with bait in them, and then lift them the next day. And hopefully the fishermen then manage to catch a few velvet crab, and that's the velvet crab there. Really lucky. You sometimes catch a lobster in the same creel. We only keep the, the ones of proper size, the small ones all go back to the sea. And any, anything with berries on it, and are actually pregnant with, this one hasn't got any berries, we throw it back to the sea so that they can reproduce. That's all we do is harvest from the sea, but harvest in a sustainable manner. Do you think climate change is an issue? And if so, how is it affecting your business? Climate change is a big issue. Um, we, we have to bear in mind that there's a finite resource available, so we have to look after it very carefully. And if the sea starts to warm up, the velvet crab, which basically is our main business, start to decrease. They just don't survive in warm water. And if we overheat the seas that we have, um, then we're in big trouble. Our business will finish. So we can't see problems for the future unless we start to do something about it now. It's quite high carbon, so what we've been doing is we're trying to run much more efficient engines. We're trying to be very efficient about how we go about catching the shellfish, about how we, we do our drop-offs en route and a, our ferry journeys back again, so that we're running these lorries in a much more efficient manner. So we're being very, as careful as we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we're a mixed livestock farm on the west coast of Scotland in Argyll. Um, we've got about 1,200 acres and we farm about uh, 700 breeding sheep and probably about 100 breeding cattle. 
about half of our livestock we put through our own butchery and sell direct to uh, through the farm shop and various other outlets like farmers markets and we've got a mobile farm shop that goes around all the local uh, villages. So this is where we butcher all our stuff. There's a hanging space behind that door there and then this is everything's done here. But there's a sausage machine and everything around the corner for making sausages. Everything's vacuum packed and then labelled and sold. Um, and in the shop here we've got, we set the shop up about a year ago, trying to stock as much of uh, local produce as possible from Argyll and if not from Argyll from Scotland. So all the meat is our own. Um, we've got smoked fish which comes from Rory Murray Smoke Products which is Ford which is about three or four miles away. There's fresh strawberries from about three or four miles away over at Lunga. Um, homemade puddings from a lady down at Loch Gilpad. I love mulled cheese, uh, Aran cheese. Um, there's local vegetables. We've got preserves from the Isle of um, Isle of Butte in Argyll. Uh, jams from a lady in Tyre. Well, the fact that it, everything is born and reared here. So apart from that, everything is else is done on site using local labour, so people aren't travelling too far to work. Um, it's reared in this amazing environment, there's not much intensity about it. The main problem we've found is the cost of the inputs, like the, the fuel of um, just of running the business and then the cost of fuel for hauling things in like straw, which is impossible to make on the west coast of Scotland, and um, trying to rely on the weather to do things at the right time of year is, is quite hard as well. Just to be able to kind of think a bit out of the box and um, think of the resources that we do have here and try and use those. Um, there's lots of alternative energies we could be using. We've thought about uh, water somehow harnessing the water power here in the river. Methane digestion I think would be quite a good one to be able to use. We have a lot of slurry so to be able to use that producing energy and heat and maybe even using that to fuel the tractors and the vans and things by converting it into LPG. Um, so yeah just to be adaptable and embrace new ideas. Well, thank you so much for your time. That's all right. Yeah, thank you. We visited Open Auction Mart to speak to local farmers and landowners about their concerns of climate change. Open Auction Mart is a prime example of a business trying to lower carbon emissions, animals travelling a short distance to market. Here we interviewed local farmer Neil, Neil McClockendale. Neil, do you think climate change is an issue and if so, how does it affect your business? It is an issue and it will become more of an issue in years to come. I think people that are farming in rural areas are well aware of that waiting for a lot of results of various research and things that's going on just now, but no question it will be an issue in years to come. Though. What about the use of nitrogen and the climate change? Yes, I think uh, one thing that's coming out in the meetings is it's probably one of the most important issues. Uh, if you were looking at a map of Scotland, you'd find the area you're in just now in the west is coloured fairly green because of the low use of nitrogens, artificial nitrogens, and some of the other areas where they have a much bigger input in nitrogen are coloured dark purple. So there's, there's no question at all that uh, better use of nitrogen, timing-wise, and maybe looking for alternatives would certainly help the country reach its targets. <laughs> Yes, it would, definitely does, no question of that at all. I've uh, been to a few meetings with uh, government officials and foresters and uh, yeah, farming opinion is that the right tree in the right place is nothing to be afraid of. It needn't necessarily reduce food production or stand in the way of food production and the right tree, as I say, in the right place definitely will have a part to play in the future. Okay. Well, that's all our questions. Thank you, Neil. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, girls.
Ash is all about outdoor activities and getting out and enjoying the landscape that we have here on our doorstep. And Argyll has the most amazing coastal landscapes and also the islands and all their, the mountain ranges as well that um, just make it the perfect location for all these different varieties of outdoor activities. minimal impact approach whenever we go out on location and we always um, ensure that people leave no trace that they've been there. That's one of our um, sort of policies about that and we think it's really important to promote responsible looking after our environment when we're out on location and um, all the people that do activities with us um, experience that. does um, themselves are actually really carbon neutral compared to other pastimes that young people can be doing. So they're kayaking and gorge walking and hill climbing. Um, apart from actually getting there, then they are completely carbon neutral. For yourselves to do more, just when you're in, in the outdoor environment, just realise um, how the natural state of it is and make sure that you don't leave any impact of you being there before. delivery of wood chips into that container and then we transfer those chips into the boiler. Would you like to get a look inside the boiler? And it goes through the heat exchanger and the heat from the flue gases is transferred to the water, circulates around and heats the pool water, it heats all the water for the showers and it heats all the air to keep the pool nice and warm. Uh, the first is that we have uh, a real environmental dividend and that we are no longer using um, heating oil that comes from the Middle East and we are now substituting that with wood fuel that comes from mid -Argyle. And in doing that we have um, minimise the carbon footprint uh, of our community pool. We have a, an economic benefit that has been of huge significance to the pool. And we now have a situation where our cost saving is something like £13,000 a year. The third thing is that there is a considerable social gain because uh, what we are doing is in the consumption of wood chip we are utilising uh, local labour, uh, local businesses to produce the fuel that we need um, and that helps keep the, the, the Midargyll pound in Midargyll. Thanks Bob for your time, it's been amazing to see in such a unique window right there in our doorstep. We have looked at climate change and the effects. We've looked at local issues and explored the main land uses in Argyll and Butte. Looking at the implication of climate change and spoken to key people in each of these fields. All the people we've spoken to understand climate change is a huge issue and want to do their best to help.